Hi everyone, so thank you for joining this symposium entitled as Evolution of Language from Perspectives of Hierarchical Complexity. I'm Misato Hayashi from Primate Research Institute, Kyoto University, chairing this session. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Natalie and Daniela for allowing me to organize the invited symposium. So most of the speakers today are from a research team titled as Evolinguistics, Integrative Studies of Language Evolution for uh, Co-Creative Communication, granted by MEXT, granting aid for scientific research on innovative ideas, studied in 2017 in Japan. Our aim is the construction of Evolinguistics by understanding and establishing theory of co-creative language communication. And we have two main themes of our research project, it's uh, hierarchy and the intention sharing investigated by five groups focusing on different aspects to study origins and evolution of uh, language. Uh, so the first one is linguistic theory. Oops, it's not working. Uh, and behavior biology, human evolution, cognitive development, and emergent constructive approach. Today we focus on the hierarchical complexity in the evolution of language as our uh, symposium theme. So we have five speakers today, uh, starting from me, and Yoshima Saseki, Hiroki Koda, Rie Asano, Sveoka uh, Johansen, each have 20 minutes, including uh, questions and answers. Unfortunately, the original discussion on Cedric Boix was not able to come today. Instead, we would like to have a discussion uh, from the Evolutionistics team, Dr. Michiru Makuchi from National Rehabilitation Center for Persons with Disabilities. So, shall I start? The, as the first speaker, I will talk about hierarchical complexity in stone tool use by wild chimpanzees and nesting cup manipulation by captive chimpanzees. So chimpanzees and humans diverged from their common ancestor at about six million years ago. As the closest living relative study of chimpanzees can give us important indications on the phylogenetic and ontogenetic origins of human evolution. So cognitive development in primates, including humans, can be assessed and compared by focusing on the object manipulation skills. Object manipulation starts out by simple manipulation on single object, uh, like in this example. So the infant is just touching a stone. So a single action of touch onto uh, a single object, a stone. And uh, then it increases its complexity, such as manipulating multiple objects with multiple actions. So now uh, he is rolling, hitting multiple stones at the same time. So it's more complex than the previous phase. Then I also start to show combinatory manipulation, which manipulate objects uh, in relation to self body, to substrate, and to other object. And this video shows the combinatory manipulation to other individuals. So the infant is manipulating big uh, branch to touch the adult. So this is the combinatory manipulation to other individual. And then they start to exhibit the object-object combination, like in this case. So he's touching a twig onto a stone. And this object object combination seems not having the functional meaning. But if it has the functional meaning, it, uh, meaning it leads to the emergence of tool use. Or uh, if it's used in a context of, it can be used in a communi uh, communication context or in object play mediated by objects. 
And chimpanzees are also known to exhibit a variety of object-to-object -object combinations, such as stacking blocks or drawing behavior uh, with a brush or pen on a paper. So uh, to see the object-to-object -object combination and uh, by focusing on the hierarchical complexity shown in object-to-object -object combination, I applied a nesting cup task. So many of you may know about the nesting cup tasks developed by Greenfield et al. back in 1970s. Their ideas were to test human linguistic capacity in the context of object manipulation by focusing on grammatical rules in their cup manipulation. And some previous studies focused on the frequency of subassembly recursive strategies in human children and non-human primates, such as chimpanzees and capuchin monkeys. However, all of the tested species showed the subassembly method, uh, which is thought to be uh, most complex behavior for human uh, children. Uh, all studies subject uh, showed this type of combination. So I developed a new notation system for action grammar to conduct more precise analysis. So the newly invented uh, notation system focuses on the three elements in object manipulation. The first numeral uh, represent object, which cup was manipulated, and then action, in what kind of manipulated action, and uh, uh, manipulative action, and location, where the cup was oriented to, by combining two numerals and one alphabet in the middle. So in this notation system, pairing method can be described as one cup is inserted to second cup uh, in the form of one and two. And pot method is described as a cup is combined into a pre-existing set of second and third cup, one and two, three. And subassembly method requires the manipulation of multiple, multiple cups as a unit to be combined with the third cup, one, two, and three, colored in red. So here is an uh, example of a cup manipulation by chimpanzee I. So the cup one, two, three, four, five is placed on the floor, two replaced on the floor, three put to two, three put to five, three to floor, four replaced, three into four, two into three, four, five replaced, two, three, four into five, and one into two, three, four, five. So the part colored in red, two, three, four, into five, uh, means the subassembly method she used. And this movie shows the nine cup seriation by chimpanzee I and the human of three years and four months. And uh, after combining five cups, they were introduced nine cup to be seriated into a structure. And if you see the chimpanzee uh, movie, she is combining cups into some units. So she is trying to reduce the number of cup and units on the floor. And if you See that both sides, both chimpanzees and human children have so much difficulty in uh, seriating <laughs> all nine cups. <laughs> yeah, even for human children, this task is extremely difficult, and they are adjusting the cup combination and. In frequently, human children also pose and doesn't want to participate, but with some encouragement, she starts. <laughs> and if you see the chimpanzee side, you can see not straightforward sediation. So she is trying many ways, and one by one, she tries to solve a problem, so it's slightly slanted. <laughs> and then the second from top doesn't. Then she disassemble, insert, disassemble, insert. So one by one, step by step, she is 
making the new pairs. And in the case of human as well, she is trying many combinations. So now I finally succeeded. So this is the nine cup variation by eye. So it took 2.5 minutes to complete the task. And uh, you can see some parts are colored in red, meaning uh, she showed subassembly strategy. And based on the notation system of action grammar, you can compare various aspects of cup manipulation of different species, such as the efficiency of nine cup variation. The performances of adult and juvenile chimpanzees were very similar to that of human children of two to three years of age through trial and error strategy. They tended to reduce the apparent number of cup units on the floor, but uh, the failed individuals in the bottom didn't uh, uh, achieve, uh, didn't give so much attention to detect the gap between the cups to uh, make more continuous pairs of cups. So currently, we are now starting a collaborative research inside our evolinguistics teams using my data on nesting cup manipulation in chimpanzees and human children. Dr. Takashi Hashimoto and Genta Toya will make the analysis through computer modeling uh, methodologies. And based on the result of modeling research done by Professor Hashimoto and Toya, we are starting a new task for chimpanzees, which requires the subject to make a new combination to test the hypothesis that various goals elicit more subassembly recursive combinations. And to study chimpanzees' cognitive ability, there can be many different approaches. You can easily expect experimental setting. Uh, studies happen in captive settings, and observational studies happen in the wild. But the complex living enclosures will facilitate the observational studies on their more naturalistic behaviors, including social fission fusion dynamics in captivity. And experimental settings can be applied in the wild habitat by setting up an outdoor laboratory. So there is a small community of wild chimpanzees near Bosu village, Guinea, West Africa. An outdoor laboratory was set up near the top of hill in 1988. And we have been continuously taking the longitudinal video recording of the development of stone tool used to crack open oil palm nuts with the aid of a pair of stone tools. And very recently, uh, we have published uh, data of individual identification through AI deep learning. So the AI machine can learn uh, the video, the individual on the video. And in the outdoor laboratory of Bosu, the nut cracking behavior using a pair of stones have been intensively studied. And the bottom graph shows the number of blows required for cracking open a nut. Until 3.5 years of age, they never succeed in cracking open nuts. And even after the first success, uh, Juvenile chimpanzees need many blows to crack a nut. As they develop, the number of blows becomes much less. And the second part depicts the Professor Tetsuro Matsuzawa, which developed tree structure analysis in which a combination among objects were described as a node. Uh, nut cracking behavior is categorized as level two to use, uh, put a nut on a nabu stone, and then hit the nut with a hammer stone. Use of a wedge stone to stabilize an ambu stone has the highest hierarchical complexity ever recorded for wild chimpanzees, categorized as level three. And the third point is archaeological views were also applied to analyze the nut cracking behavior in Bosu and surrounding areas. And I myself is focusing on the development of efficiency through learning. So this video shows uh, an adult chimpanzee cracking open nuts and a juvenile chimpanzee performance uh, when he just started to succeed in cracking open nuts. So if you focus on the adult individual, she required only one hit to get the kernel inside the oil palm nuts. And then if you look at the juvenile, he is hitting the nut on an ambu stone, but without success. So the juveniles show many hits, while the adult chimpanzee placed the nut and only one hit 
it was required to take the kernel. So as you may notice in the video, there was clear differences on the efficiency in nut cracking behavior between the adult in the left and the juvenile in the right. The similar notation system for action grammar was applied in this context, and the red circle indicates the success in cracking nuts. Also, the transition pattern of each behavioral element showed that the adult has the efficient flow of actions, starting off by adjusting the angle of ambul stone, picking up a nut, put it on the ambul stone, hit the nut on the ambul with a hammer stone, picking up the kernel, and eat it. In contrast, the juvenile tended to hit the nut on an ambul with a hammer stone many times without success. Sometimes the nut rolls off from the ambul and very few success to get the inside kernel. Carvalho et al. applied the method code as chains of words, which are commonly used in archaeological studies to describe the nut cracking behavior in both chimpanzees. Similarly, Stout described the action hierarchy existing in the listic technology of Ali Hominin. In collaboration with members of our linguistic team led by Katsuhiro Sano, we are planning to evolve this comparative approach in stone tool use and manufacture, which may show more advanced hierarchical complexity in human lineage, especially in the domain of tool manufacture. So the future directions would be two forwards. I'm planning to reanalyze uh, longitudinal videos of nesting cup manipulation in juvenile chimpanzees and uh, human children. Uh, to see the development of hierarchical structure and also try to find a link between efficient nesting cup strategy and linguistic ability in human children. Moreover, I would like to expand the comparative scope in the nesting cup task by testing other species primates living in Japan Monkey Center in order to have broad view to investigate human evolution in general. And lastly, it may be possible to have some insights on interspecies intention sharing during the training phase of a new task using nesting cup to make various combinations because it's a, a brand new uh, paradigm for the chimpanzees to learn. Okay, thank you for your attention.